right, welcome back. We got a uh, tremendous show coming your way today, and the, the hits just keep on coming. Um, now, we should have Chris Markowski on, on Monday because it's Money Monday, but when you get the money guests on Wednesday, you got to get them in here. And uh, Chris Markowski joins us now. He's a registered investment advisor. He's also uh, the host of a podcast called The Watchdog of Wall Street and the founder of Markowski Investments. Chris, thanks a lot for joining us well, today John, on Liquid Frank, Lunch. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate Frankie's, that. Guys, uh, with yeah. us. He's over in the zone. I think I had a bird incident here. Look at that. <laughs> I had a little oh, something boy, that's good luck, right? Yeah. That's what I tell you. <laughs> so, uh, well, having you here, it must be the, uh, the good luck. But uh, you got this catchy name, the Watchdog of Wall Street. But what does it really mean? What do you? What's the insights that you give people that that make you the watchdog? Well. I, you've been around for a while, so you know that conventional wisdom is poison when it comes to investments. Everything that they're pitching you and telling you to do, uh, major brokerage firms, CNBC, you name it, it, oftentimes you're going in the wrong direction. And that's what I've been doing. I've been on my radio show for 20 years now, is defying conventional wisdom and trying to get investors to do the right thing with their money uh, to avoid the various different pitfalls that continue to come up. Whether you're going back to the 1990s, where they're telling you to double down on every dot com stock out there in Enron, to uh, the uh, the financial crisis, keep buying real estate because it can never go down. Or, hey, buy more Uber because uh, companies that don't make money are fantastic. It's all that nonsense that we try to dispel. So um, I take issue with this guy they call the wolf of Wall Street because it's like a catchy name and everything. But this guy played such an insignificant part of Wall Street history that he's grown into this fake phenomena. Um, he's basically a Long Island penny stock peddler yes. who ripped people off. There was no magic. There was no wolfness. This was a fraud. Well, it was, it was a huge fraud, and obviously Scorsese made it much bigger than it actually was. And, you know, the, the unfortunate thing is, you know, I saw the movie, too, and the movie bothered me to some degree because it didn't show the pain that investors had uh, for the victims uh, of this fraud, which is unfortunate. But now he's, he's managing to make money. I see him all over the place now pitching his various different uh, seminars and how to sell this and how to sell that. And uh, he's supposed to turn some of that money to investors last time I checked. Well, he had this big, huge judgment against him, I think, that he was supposed to pay back to people. So I don't yeah. know how he's making money. But every time I scroll through my Instagram, I see, learn from the wolf. <laughs> the last thing I want to learn from is the wolf. How to go to jail. I mean, yeah, how to go to jail in, in three short years. But uh, Frankie, actually, he's slowly building a portfolio of his own there. Mm -hmm. um, and he might have some questions for the, for the watchdog of Wall Street. Well, my big question has to do with the uh, president's trade deal with China, phase one of which he's announcing right now. And we appreciate everyone watching us instead of watching the president. Um, but what do we know about exactly what's in this trade deal and how will trade with China be different going forward? We still haven't gotten in regards to this deal. What we do have is China has agreed to purchase billions of dollars in our goods, agriculture, manufacturing, uh, airplanes, cars, car parts. These are things that they weren't buying before. But I would look at this more of like a cherry on top of a Sunday. Even though it's the biggest part out there, people start seeing billions of dollars in purchases. The most important thing is, is this country, we build things and create things here. We've got a country, we've got the best universities in the world. We've got some of the best minds. You pick up an Apple phone, it says where? It was designed in California. We cannot have our stuff stolen. And that's the issue. And they're now starting to work this into the deal where they're going to say, okay, part of the phase two part of the deal is we're going to deal with intellectual property rights and forced technology transfers. So if you come up with an idea, they can't steal it. That's important. So I'm in, uh, I write a Monday morning newsletter, give people a little cheat sheet on stuff, economic indicators, things that are happening during the week. And I've been talking about, you know, a good deal here. Any deal that is, that is, is recognized as bona fide um, could take the market to 30000 You think we're overheated here? Should people be watching their portfolio closely or is there still some room to run? Hey, some portfolio advice. You treat your portfolio like Mr. Miyagi treats his bonsai tree. You cut here and you snip here. You take profits. All the time, you always like to rook them, uh, roll them over and understand that compounding is the royal road to riches. That's extraordinarily important. You must do that. What's one other tip you can give people when your broker calls you and says, I, I come from, I'm a short seller <laughs> my whole career, so I always get a stock tip and figure out why I should be selling short because I think the thing is going down. 
What's one mistake that people make with brokers and stuff that they need to know about? Buying what's hot. The whole, I mean, buy low, sell high. How difficult is that, John? <laughs> yeah, I, right. I, I, how, it's real simple. Don't <laughs> chase the trend. Very good news. We're going to have uh, Chris Markowski, the watchdog of Wall Street, on uh, hopefully on a Money Monday next time. Maybe he may even do his radio show from right here in the studio. Um, but very sound advice. I mentioned this in the Monday Morning Quarterback also. There's an old saying on Wall Street that you buy the rumor and you sell the news. Don't get caught in the trend and go chasing after stuff because the news, good news came out. People have already invested waiting for that. It's probably going down. And if it's real news, it'll come back later. So buy the rumor, sell the news. Um, more news coming back right after this.